Hey everybody, Lisa Romano here, the Breakthrough Life Coach, and today I want to share a uh, letter with all of you that I think will resonate with many of us. It has to do with flirting and what we are to do when we are married to or in relationships with people who like to flirt and it's upsetting to us. Dear Lisa, I just watched your video on codependency and lies when you were afraid to tell the truth. My husband and I have often had the discussion about how it hurts me when he flirts. He heard your video. He says that by my wanting him to rein the outgoing friendly behavior, that I am being too controlling and trying to make him not be himself. He refuses to change. He said that your take on the subject makes it seem that anyone disagreeing with you is wrong. He became defensive. In counseling, I explained that I don't want to keep being hurt by his behavior. He says he cannot not be who he is and won't be micromanaged by my control. I am trying to not be codependent. I don't want to get a divorce, but I am also tired of this hurt I often feel in my marriage, and I am very lonely. What should I do? So there are five things that I would like you to consider, dear one, and the first one is be more honest. His flirting doesn't hurt you because he flirts. His flirting hurts you because of what it makes you believe about yourself. It makes you believe that you're unworthy. It makes you feel that you're invisible. It makes you feel like you're unimportant. That's what's really going on. So consider being more honest. When you're in counseling and you're talking to the counselor, try to go deeper. Don't say, his flirting hurts me. It's not the flirting. It's the fact that you two are not on the same page. It's the fact that you're sharing a home and life. You're literally tied to somebody legally who seems to not hear you and not care about how you feel. And I don't think there's anything more lonely than living with somebody who doesn't see you, who doesn't really care about your feelings, who can't understand where you're coming from and refuses to consider how their behavior is making you feel. The second thing I want you to do, with, dear one, is to begin asking for what really you really want. So on the surface, we say, I want you to stop flirting. Your flirting hurts me. But below the surface, I feel alone. I'm afraid that I might want to get a divorce because I feel so alone and that frightens me. I don't want to get a divorce, but I know I can't live with somebody who doesn't see me. So yes, you have to be more honest, but you also start to have to asking for what you really want. So it's not that you want the flirting to stop. You want to know that your feelings matter. You want to know that your husband has the ability to hear you. You want to know that your husband has the desire to have empathy for how his behavior is making his wife feel and that his behavior towards other females is making you feel less than. It's making you feel vulnerable. It's making you feel powerless. It's making you feel alone. It's making you question why you're in this relationship with somebody who feels like the, the request, the, I think a very honest request to not flirt is is making him feel like he's being controlled that is troubling to me um so the question i have is has your husband witnessed his father perhaps get pushed around by women or did his father have this attitude that women should be seen and not heard and men are men and they should be allowed to do what they want and women shouldn't try to control them you know, that's fine, and if that's the attitude that your husband has or if that's the attitude someone has, that's fine. But don't get married. You don't have to be married. People who have this attitude that their spouses shouldn't control them don't have to be married. So I think we also have to think about that. If we're in relationships, then we absolutely are called to care about how our actions affect our spouses and our loved ones. That's just part of the agreement. So dear one, be more honest about what you want. I want to feel connected to you. I want to love you with all of me. I don't want to leave anything on the table. I want to make you feel like you're the most important person in the world to me. But when you make me feel like I don't matter, I have to shut down. I have to protect myself because I don't think you value how I feel. So start getting a little bit deeper about what you want. It's not about the flirting. You want to feel connected to this person and you want to feel like you'll be able to be married to him for the rest of your life but when he acts in a way that makes you feel like your request to have him 
not give energy to other females and to keep it within the, un the, the union that you have threatens him, you have to tell him how that makes you feel. The third piece of advice that I have for you is that you need to understand that you can't control your spouse, right? I can't control my husband, but if he wants to go out and have sex with other females, go out and do it. But you're not going to do it while you're married to me. I'm not going to judge you. If that's what you want, hasta la vista, baby. If you want to flirt with other females, that's fine, but you're not going to do it being married to me because I know who I am and I cannot give my all to someone who I cannot trust has my best interest at heart. And so what I suggest that you do, dear one, is absolutely come into conscious contact with the fact that you can't control your husband and you shouldn't have to, that you should be married to somebody if, you, if you're the kind of person that wants to be married. You have to know that it's not your job to get him to do what you want him to do. It's your job to make sure that you're married to somebody who wants to be on the same page with you, who doesn't want his wife to flirt because he wouldn't want to ha have to worry about how you value him or how much you value him. You have a right to be married to somebody who shares your values. And if you're married to somebody who doesn't share those values, you have a right to honor that space and to honor who he is. And that, if that means that you two are not on the same page and you can't get on the same page, then that's okay. But you just have to know that you have a right to honor who you are so and honor who he is and make it, make it very clear in your mind that your job is not to control him. You're trying to figure out through counseling if he has the ability to hear you and if he has the desire to understand what it feels like when he flirts. And I can tell you, as somebody who came from a marriage when I was married to somebody who had zero empathy for me and actually said it one day, said, I never think about your feelings. I was dumbfounded. I was floored. I was twisted. I could not believe that I was married to somebody who never thought about how his wife felt when all day, every day, all I did was think about what he felt. I tried to be a good wife to him because I didn't want him to feel neglected. I never looked at another man because I imagined what he would feel like if I did. I wanted him to feel honored. I cooked the meals that he liked because I wanted him to feel special and important to me. So here I was exuding all this empathy on this man and not once did he ever consider my feelings. And that was quite the wake up call. And then I realized I had no right to control him, but I had a right to honor who I was. And I had a right to make a decision that was in alignment with the kind of life experience I had a right to live. My fourth piece of advice to you, dear one, is that I would like you to not attach to an outcome. I did that for years. For years I was married and I was miserable and I was getting sicker and sicker and sicker and the resentment in me was growing and the frustration in me was growing. Harder and harder and harder for me to have sex with my husband. I just kept shutting down more and more and more. The resentment, the rage, the anger, because I had, I had pigeonholed myself and I had told myself that I couldn't get a divorce. I had three children, I had a business, so I had a beautiful home. And so because my brain associated pain with getting a divorce, I believe that I unconsciously began to deny my feelings because I told my brain essentially I can't get a divorce. So what does that mean? So then my brain had to flag any idea of freedom and of love of self as negative and I, I suppressed my feelings because if I got in touch with my feelings I think I would have moved through the stages of divorce much quicker. So when I began to explore the idea like well maybe I can get a divorce, maybe that's what's right for me, maybe I've come to teach my children how to honor their feelings, maybe I've come to say I honor you ex-husband of mine and it's okay that you have these belief systems and I'm not judging you anymore. I just realized I don't have to stay here anymore. And I know that I'm going to be judged by everybody that I know because a lot of people won't understand my decision. But I have to honor me. I have to go through this process. So what I want you to do is I want you to open up your mind and start playing with the idea that, well, maybe I can get a divorce. Maybe we can get separated. Maybe we can go for mediation. Maybe I can let go. Maybe it's not, worse, it's not the worst thing in the world to get divorced if we can't figure this out. 
Because needless to say, it, you said it yourself, you feel alone. That's not going to get better. That's only going to get worse. Two people need to grow together because the relationship evolves. It goes from a very highly sexually attracted to this person, you know, halo effect where you meet somebody and there's this bonding stage or this honeymoon stage, which is very, very important. Lots of sex, lots of attention. And that's how we bond with this partner. Now, over time, as, as that begins to slow down a little bit, you need true nuts and bolts of a relationship like empathy and consideration and respect to keep that relationship moving forward into the future. And if you discover after the honeymoon phase has ended that there is no empathy between you, unfortunately, the relationship is going to go, get worse and the space between you will grow, grow further and further apart and you will feel more isolated and more alone and eventually you will be you know, dealing with maybe a health crisis or whatever. I don't want that for you, nobody wants that for you, you don't want that for you, I'm sure. So begin to open up your ideas and imagine that, hmm, maybe I could get a divorce because that's gonna liberate you and that's going to allow you to find yourself and be able to speak from truth because then you're no longer afraid of the outcome of getting divorced. Right now you're afraid to tell your truth because you've told your brain, I can't get a divorce. The fifth thing that I would like to suggest that you do is that you make a decision from self-love, not anger, not resentment, not rage, and not woe is me. You're a big girl. You have a right to make a decision about your life experience. You have a right as an adult to decide who you sleep with, who you have a mortgage with, who you jointly pay the IRS taxes to. You have a right to decide who is your health care proxy. You have a right to decide who gets to share responsibilities of your home. You have a right to decide what's going to happen with you for the rest of your life. So make any decision that you have moving forward from a place of self-love. So now I want to talk about what might be really going on here. So your husband says that, you know, in watching my video, he said that anybody who disagrees with him is wrong. And I believe that he's projecting because he's actually doing that to you and he's actually doing that to me. He's saying you're wrong for trying to, well, and his, his perception is you're trying to micromanage him. All you're trying to do is get your needs met. All you're trying to do is, is make sure that you're going to be able to last in this marriage, you know, without yourself having an affair, without you leaving. That's what you're really trying to do. Um, but he's saying you're wrong. And he's saying don't micromanage me. So in essence, what he's saying is get over it. Don't disagree with me. This is who I am. Um, I am a flirtatious type of guy. What I'm saying to you is that's fine if that's who he is, but you don't have to tolerate it, right? And so um, be willing to, like I said, be honest, be willing to tell him what you want, um, know that you can't control him, um, be willing to imagine being divorced and living a different life experience. This way you're not afraid to be tell your truth and make all decisions based on self-love. So now what I want a couple like this to understand is that you know, to be married, you're basically entering into an agreement that um, it goes without saying, it shouldn't go without saying, but we're agreeing to have empathy for one another. Now, if your husband deems that your request for him to stop flirting is too much for him, then he has a right to say, I'm not going to change. I don't care what you say, but I'm not going to change. I feel more than likely that this is rooted in his fear of being controlled by a female. It may also signal his uncomfortableness with giving himself completely to a woman. You know, it's very difficult for, and I think it's evident in our society, and it shouldn't be, but in lots of cases, it's very difficult for a man to drop the ego and to give themselves fully to a woman. Not all men, but in a lot of the cases, men have a de very difficult time softening up and giving themselves to a woman because it frightens them. Because once they give themselves to their wife, then at any time that their wife wants to flirt or any time that their wife wants to leave, they can leave. And then this man who wants to see himself as this big, strong guy will be reduced to you know, a feeling human being like the rest of us who cry when their feelings get hurt and who feel abandoned just like the rest of us who have actually touched that type of vulnerability. So these are the types of things that I would like you to 
maybe be able to talk to your husband about because maybe that's what's going on. On your end, dear one, if you grew up in a home where you felt invisible, if you had parents who were very domineering, if you had a mom who was very codependent and coward to dad, you know, you may have been taught that you should not trust your experience. You may have been taught that you don't have a right to exert a boundary. You may not even be connected to the true self yet. You might not think that you are worthy to tell people what you think and what you feel and to have a partner who has agreed to marry you to believe that this partner who has taken this vow and this oath, you might not even believe that this partner is supposed to respect how you feel. So I would like you guys to think about these ideas and then decide from a place of love of self. So on your husband's side, is he willing to curtail this behavior, understand how it makes you feel, and is he willing to meet you on this in this vulnerable place and let you know that you are the most important woman in his life and that you're he's sorry that these actions have hurt you and that wasn't his intention. And are you willing, Is if he's willing to do that, that's awesome, but you have to be willing to take the chance that if he doesn't do that and he's not willing to make that change on behalf of you and your marriage well into the future, then you've got to make a decision, you know. Are you going to be able to accept this behavior? Are you willing to accept being in a lonely, empty marriage? And if not, are you willing to honor the self? Tough, tough decisions, but I believe that life is just a bunch of experiences that have been created to help us define who we are. And I believe that my divorce was really a manifestation of the desire to be able to know that I can speak on my own behalf and that I could love my husband enough to let him go and stop judging him for not having empathy for me. I just stopped judging him and I said, I'm sorry I tried to change you, I was wrong. I should have paid attention to the way I felt many, many years ago, you know, and I hope that you can forgive me one day. And then I left the relationship where it was and I moved forward in my life and now I've manifested an amazing relationship with a man who's got tremendous empathy, not only for me, but for so many people. And I can tell you, dear ones, that if you want a wonderful relationship, you have to love yourself and you have to know that you're you're not asking too much to um, feel like your partner sees and feels you and values how you feel. But you really can't manifest that until you value how you feel first. So I hope this um, video has helped some of you get a little bit clearer about boundaries and about self-love and about what we have the right to ask our partners for in a relationship. Namaste, I bow to the love and the light that is absolutely in you. Bye for now. Namaste, dear ones. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video. And I really do hope it has brought some clarity to your heart, to your mind, to your body, to your soul. I would also like you to know that I have launched a membership site, which is full of resources and tools. You consider it a one-stop shop for anyone who is serious about taking on the role of victor over narcissistic abuse and codependency. Lots of programs, lots of audios, lots of meditations, journaling prompts, workbooks, you name it. And also a private Facebook group that is full of breakthrough warriors supporting one another on this amazing healing path.